And this is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. My guest is Mark Travis of Intrepid Capital. Uh, his fund outperformed 99% of its peers over the past five years. Mark, I've got your hat. I'm going to sort of put it on to try to sort of get the zeitgeist, you know, of Intrepid Capital. Tell me about a kind of stock that performs well in a rising interest rate environment, this idea of anticipating an increase in rates. Well, I think if you look at some of the equities we've looked at and acquired this year, um, most of them, and, and, and frequently, they have uh, no liabilities on their books. So they're not subject to any type of refinancing risk. And then we're the first in line in their capital structure. But some of the names that we're going to talk about today have high cash balances or there's some part of their business that will benefit as rates rise. So contrary to what most people would assume in a rising rate environment, uh, these companies will do better. Typically, when you discount a cash flow at a higher rate, you get a lower terminal value. I would tend to think some of these companies uh, would actually do better in a rising rate environment. Either what are we talking about? Like federated? Like federated yeah. investors Fe or FII? Yeah, exactly. They've had to, you know, cap their expenses in this low market environment. They can't earn their normal, you know, 70 basis points managing money market fees. And um, their business would actually perform better in a, you know, 3 or 4% short-term rate world. In the meantime, I've got, you know, really no net debt, $2.6 $2 billion market cap, and, you know, close to a 4% dividend at this share price. Right. So, so I'm paid to wait. All right, so you're going to sit and wait with, with Federated FII. Tell me about Hilltop Holdings, HTH, and how they're expected to Well, do. it's not what it seems. If you look on the Bloomberg today, it looks like a, a company insuring, you know, mobile homes on the Gulf Coast. Really what it is is a, a unique way to play the turmoil in the banking industry and to buy a known operator in Gerald Ford at book value. So if he can find some distressed assets like he has in the past, he, he came from an environment where in the late 80s he bought SNLs and rolled them up and then eventually sold uh, Gold State uh, Bank in California. Um, today, you know, we're hoping he can deploy the six or seven hundred million dollars in cash he has on his books, and maybe one fine day we wake up with a, you know, 1.6 times multiple of that book with a known operator. So something that's defensive but has upside potential in an environment that is a lot of dislocation. How long would you be willing to wait for, let's say, an investment like a Hilltop Holdings? Well, I've owned shares in businesses uh, 20 years personally. Um, I, I, I like to say that I have the same pair of shoes, some of the same securities, and the same wife. So I, I'm very patient. That's a trifecta there <laughs> for you. It's a trifecta. All right, so you got Federated Investors, FII, Hilltop Holdings, mm -hmm. HTH. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Epic Systems, and this is a company that makes software that is really designed to take advantage of, well, bankruptcies. Well, again, it, it's, it, it, it has a unique properties to it. it the, the unique part about that software is they earn the balances on the, the cash they hold for the trustees. And right now, at 30 basis points, their, uh, their interest earnings on those balances is relatively minor. But we think it's an earnings catalyst when rates start to rise. In the meantime, it's a real high quality business. We think at a $12 share price, it's probably worth in the mid-teens. And you've got a family that runs and controls it and owns 20%. And again, uh, nobody really in front of us in the capital structure. So I'm not subject to a lot of refinancing risk. And I'm happy to sit there. All right, so you're going to sit there with that. Now, not to be outdone, everyone seems to be interested in gold. Tell me about what's happening at Newmont Mining, because I know NEM is a favorite of yours. Well, if you do an asset valuation, the simple math is the, the, the reserves times the, you know, the extraction price, less take that less the market price. You know, most gold mining companies today can extract gold at, you know, less than $500 an ounce. Well, $1,200 an ounce, there's a pretty good margin in there for them. We look at it with the millions of ounces of reserves they have, and, and we valued it in the mid-60s. Um, you know, so I feel like it's a way to own, uh, you know, an ETF, in essence, without paying a management fee. An ETF without a management fee to hold gold. Right. So I feel like as long as we have uh, central banks and central banks do what they tend to do, which is print more money, that, um, you know, gold will do okay. Tell me about Brown and Brown. This is a property and casualty insurer based in Daytona. A casualty insurer, property insurer. What do you want to be in the insurance business for? 
Well, again, I think we, in, in acquiring it in the kind of mid to high teens, we can show you over time a valuation in the you know, low 20s, obviously insuring property in Florida, which is their biggest market. But they've, they've expanded nationally through acquisition. I think they're very good operators and um, a really a clean little business that, again, management owns a large piece of. And we think we're in, uh, in parity with them. All right. I want to thank you very much, as always, Mark Travis, coming to us from Intrepid uh, Capital. Appreciate your insights uh, and your thoughts about long-term value investing. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank you, it. Man.